Hey everyone, this week's video is for all of you out there who are struggling with the use of your hands. Whether it's hand pain, loss of range of motion, or pain with an activity or sport or work, it can really negatively affect quality of life in a big way if you're struggling with the use of your hands. So that's what this week's video is all about. I hope you find great value with the video and be sure to hit the subscribe button for more informational videos regarding physical therapy and how they can improve your life. There are a number of tests that we learn in physical therapy training to help diagnose what the problem would be. These can oftentimes be very effective and very quick ways to figure out what is the problem with your hand, and that's what I'll be outlining in today's video. The first that I'll start with is carpal tunnel syndrome. I'm sure many of you have heard of carpal tunnel syndrome, which primarily occurs with repetitive use of the hands, especially if you're not maintaining a neutral wrist position. There's a lot going through and under the carpal tunnel your tendons that allow you to flex your hand, arteries, veins, and also nerves. And when you use the hands repeatedly, this can oftentimes cause the flexor tendons to become inflamed, causing pressure on what's called the median nerve, one of the three nerves that come down from your neck, through the arm, into the forearm, and into the hand. So there are three ways to identify carpal tunnel syndrome within the body. The first is the Tunnel sign. To do the Tunnel sign, you want to place your arm directly out in front of you and apply pressure over that median nerve. Just light to moderate pressure will do. If you recreate your familiar symptoms, being pain, numbness, or tingling, within 60 seconds, that's a positive Tunnel sign. If you want further evidence of carpal tunnel syndrome, you can move on to the second test, which is called the Phalanx test. To do that, you place the hands together, like this, into what's sometimes referred to as the prayer stretch, and hold for 30 to 60 seconds. Again, if this recreates your familiar pain, numbness, or tingling, that's a positive phalanx test, providing further evidence of carpal tunnel syndrome. The final test is to have your arm in front of you, called the carpal compression test, where you hold the thumb over that median nerve without tapping, just holding it, Again, for that 30 to 60 seconds. If any of these tests are recreating your familiar symptoms, then I would work on carpal tunnel syndrome rehabilitation. And for more information on that, refer to one of my previous videos, which will show you more information about carpal tunnel syndrome and how to rehabilitate yourself from this condition. Another issue that I see in my practice that can cause a great deal of hand pain and really affect quality of life is something called de Quervain's tenosynovitis. What this means is inflammation of the synovial sheath or covering of the tendon of the abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis, two tendons that go through this side of the arm. Now, when, this, when these become inflamed, it can be very, very painful and really affect your quality of life. And the way to figure out if this is your problem is to tuck the thumb in your hand, curl the fingers around the thumb, place the arm out to the side, and gently bring the hand down towards the ground. If this creates pain in this part of your hand, then that's a positive Finkelstein's test. For more information about re how to rehabilitate from this issue, refer to a different past video that I've created, which will show you some information about how to rehabilitate from this condition. A highly common condition that I see in my practice that can greatly affect the quality of use of the hands leading to great pain with activity is osteoarthritis of the fingers and thumb. What this means is wearing down of the joint surfaces faster than they can be rebuilt by the body. There are pads within our joints that prevent bone on bone. As we get a little bit older, depending upon how fast we use our hands and how much we use our hands, this can lead to a wearing down of those pads bringing the bones together, causing pain in either the fingers or the thumb. Although there's no physical therapy diagnostic procedure to figure out this issue out, the main way we need to be able to figure it out, and we can determine if it's osteoarthritis, is with an x-ray. An x-ray will show us how much joint space there is left within that joint. 
and help to guide further treatment. If you know that you have osteoarthritis in the hands, which is a lot of times most commonly felt in the base of the thumb or the base of the fingers, then you can check out yet another one of my videos, which will show you some information about how to use what's called a squeeze ball and other tools to improve the strength of your hand and help to decrease this pain with activity. Yet another common hand condition that can greatly affect quality of life is called trigger finger. Trigger finger is when the tendons of the fingers can become inflamed, causing a great restriction in your movement, sometimes even a locking up of the fingers. One of the best exercises I've found in my practice to help to heal and rehabilitate from this issue is referred to as tendon glides. Refer to this video for more information about learning how to work on this exercise and how to rehabilitate from this condition. Next up is cubital tunnel syndrome. As previously discussed, there are three nerves that come down from the neck into our forearm and hand. One of them is the median nerve, which comes through this side of the forearm, which relates to carpal tunnel syndrome. Another nerve comes through this part of the forearm into your pinky and, and ring finger. So if you're having pain along this side of your forearm or into these two fingers, that's showing ulnar nerve dysfunction. Now to really test if that's your issue is to do the tunnel sign right here in the cubital tunnel. That's where it gets its name. And if that's recreating your familiar symptoms, then again, you know it's ulnar nerve dysfunction. Now the way to work on ulnar nerve dysfunction is to work on what's called the mechanosensitivity or the sensitivity of the nerve to being stretched. Nerves don't like to be stretched like muscles. Think of nerves more as floss within your body that are really tight. But if you can floss the nerve or stretch and release, stretch and release, this can help to rehabilitate that ulnar nerve. So the way to do that is bring your arm up into this position and bring the hand back to a stretch and then off. Back to a stretch and then off. You wanna do that for 60 seconds at a time and that will start to stretch out the ulnar nerve, helping to free it up, reducing the ulnar nerve entrapment. If you're not feeling much of a stretch there, what you wanna do is add your head movement to it. So you're stretching the nerve over both your neck and your wrist. So you bring your head away from the hand as you come down, here to here, here to here. Now it's very important to only stretch a light to moderate at the most. It's very easy to overdo nerve flossing. You wanna work on that for 60 seconds at a time. And I would just do that once at a time periodically throughout the day. About three to five times would be a good amount to shoot for when beginning. I would advise you to not allow pain go past five out of 10 and no symptoms lasting longer than about a minute when you stop that exercise. Again, it should recreate your familiar symptoms, no more than light to moderate. Next up is called radial nerve entrapment, sometimes called radial nerve dysfunction. Again, there are three nerves that come down from the neck, the median, the ulnar, and the radial. The radial nerve innervates or goes to the back of the thumb and the back of the hand. So that's where you're getting your pain, numbness, or tingling. Most likely it's relating to the radial nerve. This commonly happens when someone fractures their humerus or the long bone on their arm. It can also happen in a lot of sporting activities when you have blunt trauma impact to the arm, causing that nerve to become inflamed and get entrapped between a tight tunnel in the elbow where that nerve dives down through a, a tight tunnel of muscle, tendon, and bone. So the way that we can test for this and then start working on the rehab from this condition is again to test the mechanosensitivity or the sensitivity to a stretch of the nerve. So again, getting back to the ulnar nerve, you wanna bring the hand up and away. And if that's not enough, you add the head movement to test the ulnar nerve. With this, we want to have what we want to perform what's called the waiter's tip position. So the hand comes off the stretch and then 
on the stretch. Off the stretch, on the stretch. Like you're reaching back for a tip as a waiter. That's what we're trained in PT training. So off and on. If that's creating a bit of your symptoms, but not that much, and you're, you're wanting to increase the stretch, either to test it further or to get more benefit during your rehabilitation process, again, you want to add the head movement. So as the, head, the hand goes back into that waiter's tip position, you bring your head opposite away to, again, stretch the nerve over both your neck and the wrist. And then off. On the stretch, off the stretch. Again, for 60 seconds at a time, three to five times a day, never holding that stretch and only light to moderate intensity at the most. Again, it's very easy to overdo nerve gliding, sometimes called nerve flossing. So only light to moderate at the most for only 60 seconds. This will help to free up the nerve. Think about a nerve entrapment issue as a kinked garden hose. And by flossing the nerve, you can unkink that hose and allow that nerve to function well again. So this week's video has been all about how do we self-diagnose and address various conditions within the hand that can be quite painful and lead to a great restriction in quality of life. But there are so many different topics I could post about. It really just depends what you guys would like to see. So post your comments below and subscribe so I can do my best to create a meaningful video for you or a loved one to improve quality of life. This is Dr. John Mayo, physical therapist, really hoping that this program has been helpful for you or a loved one and improves your life.